welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button and also hit that bell notification so every single time I post, you'll be notified, which is every Monday, basically. You read the title, you know what we're getting into today. Y'all really like the first cooking video and I like to eat, also like need to eat. So I thought we'd spin a block and do it again. Today, we're making crock pot chili, another very simple recipe. I guess granted, if you do have a crock pot, but I also feel like if you don't have a crock pot, you would just make it on the stove. And it's kind of like the same concept, I guess. That's my guess though, but I have a crock pot, so that's what we're making it in. Second verse, same as the first time. If you didn't see the first cooking video I did where I made a chicken pot pie, go ahead and watch that and then come back to this one. So you kind of know what the vibe is going to be. Without further ado, let's get to it. You're supposed to say yes, chef. Okay, period, let's go. Okay, so first things first, we're starting with our skillet. We're probably gonna do that on, I don't know, my stove goes from like low to like, well, my stove goes from like low heat to high. Okay, obviously everyone's stove does that. Hold on, let me figure out what I'm trying to say. The highest setting my stove goes on right under high is eight. So we're putting our stove right now at a six. And I just wanna put a little, I think this is olive oil in this uh, jar right here in this bottle. I'm gonna put some olive oil in here. And again, I want to say, if you saw the first one, you know, I don't really do measurements, so we're just going on pure vibes, honestly. I'm going to let that heat up. You know when your oil is heated up, when it like basically has the consistency of water, basically. So right now you can see it's a little too thick to be considered like water. So we'll let it sit for a little bit, let the stove heat up. And then when it moves around like water, make me sweat, make me hotter. Maybe me lose my breath in your da -da 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 -da. Anyway, when it's heated up like that, then we'll know that we can put our ingredients in. While she's heating up, I will be cutting one whole white onion to slice and dice and put in there. And something I learned from my days at Chipotle, for those who don't know, I used to work at Chipotle. When you're cutting onions and you don't want your eyes to water, you're gonna turn on the cold water on your kitchen faucet and you're gonna chew some gum. And somehow, magically, that helps you not cry when you're uh, cutting onions. My eyes are still watering. Oh no, stop that, my makeup done. This is no bueno. Ah, I need tissue. <laughs> we're gonna power through. We just have this last half of the onion to cut and then we're good. Okay, Whew. I'm fine, I'm fine now. I did turn the stove down a little bit just cause I was worried about the onions cooking too fast while I was having my mental breakdown. But we're good, I'm gonna turn it, I turned it down to four, I'm turning it back up to six. I'm gonna let those cook down for a little bit, like maybe till they get maybe a little translucent. Not all the way, cause they still have to sit in there when I put the ground turkey in, but just a little bit. Enough for me to sweep up the mess that I made on the floor. All right, now I'm adding in our meat straight from the pack, we'll season it while it's in the pan. I'm using ground turkey. You can use ground beef or even ground chicken, I guess. I just prefer turkey because it's a little more lean and not that I'm exactly health conscious, but if I can make certain substitutions that I don't mind too much, I'll go ahead and do it for the greater good. I know it looks really gross, everyone calm down. Okay, so as far as our seasonings go, we wanna do the standards, you know, your regular salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and you know we ain't measuring over here. So I have my salt, I have this shape spoon, this size spoon. I'm not gonna do too much salt, this much. Pepper, if I can. Garlic powder. Ooh, that was a lot. <laughs> that was onion powder, paprika which we all know is just for vibes because it really don't taste like anything. Chili powder, because duh. Hello, is it open? Oh, I don't think it's open. I also picked up this cayenne pepper, which I'm not gonna put too much because I don't really do spicy like that, but I do think it'll give the chili a nice kick. And then I never seen this seasoning before. This is from McCormick. It's their Chipotle chili pepper seasoning. And once I figure out how to get the lid off, We'll be cooking. 
All right. I don't know how much of that, so we're not gonna do too much. All right, and then when we have all our seasonings in there, we're gonna give it a little toss. I wish I had one of those like, I don't know, I don't know the name of it. A meat separator is what's coming to mind, but I know that's not it. But basically it's like a tool that like has like hard, no, vertical like fan blade looking things on it and it helps you separate the meat, like ground meat in your pan so it doesn't um, like chunk up like this, but we'll make do. I'll do a little bit of this. This is basically what it does. I also want to add, so I think minced garlic would be a good thing to add. That seems reasonable to me. I feel like a lot of the seasonings are, I feel like I should maybe add some more though. I don't know, I'm not really getting that smell. All right, I'm gonna get a little adventurous here. I'm getting a little adventurous here. I'm gonna add some worse than Shire sauce. I feel like it's got that good smoke quality and it's for color. I don't know how much to add y'all. So I'm trying something new, being a little adventurous. Ooh, I like the way that smells. I'm gonna cover it and let it brown. You know, I need to let everything kind of brown for a little bit. I need to clean up the kitchen. I'll probably end up taking out the trash because I don't want the meat to sit overnight in the trash. And when I come back, she'll probably be ready. That's that's my guess. She'll probably be ready. I'm back. This is what we're working with. See, this is why I need that tool. It's all clumped up, but it'll be easier to break apart. I can go ahead and turn it down now, now that it's essentially cooked all the way through. Turning it down to like a four. When I went to take out the trash, I like also was like, let me check my mailbox. Guess what I found in my mailbox? Not a PR package. <laughs> a, a, a goddamn jury summons. <sighs> I am vexed. I don't want to do it. I, there's nothing more I hate than being summoned for jury duty. Nothing. <sighs> I'm irritated. All right, I had to switch angles so y'all could see. I broke out the crock pot. Can't lie, don't know how old she is. My mom's had this for a while. And then obviously when I moved, I took her over. So I don't know how old she is, but she works just fine, right? So the meat is basically done cooking. I'm gonna turn it on the lowest setting just to let it get its last bit of cooking before I put everything together. Now, assembly is gonna be the most important part. Let me show you everything you'll need. Obviously you'll need your meat that you just cooked, whatever you're making, whatever meat is gonna be the hunk of your chili, right? But I'm gonna show you some other things you'll need. You'll need beans. I have two cans of red beans and then one can of black beans. Obviously, I think beans are probably like the second most critical part of the chili other than your meat. Um, and then I feel like red beans are typically what you'll find in chili. So no matter how big of a portion size you're making your chili, for me personally, I would always do a two to one red bean to black bean ratio, but that's just me. And I don't, I'm not an expert, I'm, this is just what I would do. Next thing is diced tomatoes. Again, another essential ingredient. You could probably sub it out with like maybe whole tomatoes if that's your vibe or I saw, I looked at a recipe online that said you could use tomato sauce instead, but I just kind of like having a bunch of different textures and like a bunch of different little things in my chili. You also need, specifically, this is diced tomatoes with green chilies, because green chilies is actually super relevant. I actually kind of wish I got another can of this, but I think it'll be fine. And this is why I say this is literally the easiest thing you'll ever make, because you open and you dump. Open and dump. Now that we have all our canned ingredients in, we can go ahead and add our meat. This is really hard to do because I'm not left-handed. Oh my God, I feel like I'm about to drop it. Now that everything is all in, we're gonna give it a mix just to rotate the ingredients, try to get everything married. Now trust the process because I know you. if you've never made chili before, you're probably like, oh girl, it's looking a little, it don't have that chili look. Trust the process. I'm gonna add some more Worcestershire. Mm, that's not even how you say it though. <laughs> that's not even how you say it. I'm gonna add some more of this dark brown sauce for the color and for like that smoky, smoky flavor. Give her more of a toss. My grandmother called while I was filming and I forgot to say this, but the crock pot is on high and we're checking in every two hours. So I think she's been on for about two hours now, maybe two and a half, but I wanna give a quick little taste just to see what we're working with here. It could use more, right? It could use more. I'm gonna do more of the cayenne because I want more kick. 
I'm gonna do more of this chipotle chili pepper. Season all the over reliable. Okay, see just now I got a really good whiff and now that was giving, that was giving chili. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, it's only been two hours though, so I don't wanna judge it. I'm gonna cover it back and let it do its thing for a few more hours. Okay, you guys, several hours later, maybe about another four hours, this is what we're working with. She's gorge, stop, look at that color. Look at just, look at that steam, she's hot. This is what we wanted. This is what we wanted, honestly. She looks good. Time to do a little taste test, honestly. I don't even have a light with me. The little spotlight thing died, so I'm just gonna use my stove light. That's good. And it's got that like little kick in the back too. Like it hits you a little bit in the back of your throat. That's real good. Right now in the oven, I just have some cornbread, just follow the box directions. And I added some honey to it, just cause I like my cornbread a little sweet to go with the savoriness of the chili, but that's really good. That's everything, you guys. I hope you all enjoyed another installment of Cooking with Sham. If you did, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and a like and share it with your friends and your family if you're trying to put them onto some new recipes. What's your go-to like winter meal? What other things do you want me to try and cook? Do you want me to stick to like tried and true recipes or do you want me to try something new? Let me know. But as always, I love you all very much. Please take care of yourselves out there. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to one another. Do something that not only makes you feel good but makes you feel better. Talk nice to yourself or talk nice to anybody else. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace.